Hi, OpenXML developers. I got a question recently on the OpenXML developer forums on how to set colors and fonts and background colors and images and row heights in cells in PresentationML. I'm going to walk through today how I research problems like this. These are the types of issues. They're pretty easy once you know the tricks just to go in and find out how these things are set, what the markup is. And then it's pretty easy also to find out what the OpenXML SDK code should look like. So let's go take a look at this. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a presentation with a little table in it. I'll call it test01. I'll open it. I will insert a little table. I'll make it a 3x3 three three table. Put a few words in all of those cells. And I'm going to save it and close it. Now I'm going to take that and copy it and paste it and make a new presentation, I'll call it test02. I'm going to go into test02. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just see what the markup looks like when I bold one of these cells. So I'll select the cell, I'll make it bold, I'll save it, and I'll close it. I'm now going to use the Open XML SDK productivity tool. You can get this productivity tool at the location where you can download the OpenXML SDK. It's this link right here. I'll open up the productivity tool and I'm going to compare files. I'll compare test01 to test02. We can see that this core.xml changed, but we don't care about that. What we care about is this slide1.xml. I'll click on that and view the part difference. Up here, there is an extensibility list. We're not really interested in that. It, something about that changed, but we don't really care. What we care about is this down here, where PowerPoint added a Boolean attribute, this B attribute on the run properties. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Let's go and make another change and see what that looks like. I'll copy test02 and rename that to test03. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to set the background of this cell. I'll go to the Design tab. I'll go to Shading, and I'll make it a bright yellow. Save it and close it. Go to the Productivity tool, Compare Files, I'll compare test02 to test03. Look at the differences in slide one. And now we can see that in the table cell properties, there is this new element, A colon solid fill. We can see that the color here is the RGB color for yellow. Now let's go put an image in that cell. I'll copy test03 to test04. I'll go into test04, and here I'm going to add a background image. I'll go to the Design tab. I'll go to the Shading drop-down. I'll select Picture. I'll select this OXD.png picture, and insert that, and we can see we have a little openxmldeveloper.org image behind our text. Let's go look at the differences in the markup. And now we can see there's a couple of differences. One thing is that there's now a new part down here, this image1.png part, that's to be expected. And further, there are changes in the relationships from slide one, that there's a relationship from slide one to that image1.png. And let's look at the differences in slide one. And here we can see the markup for that 
background image is this blip fill element. Now let's go and take a look at the changes in markup if I resize a row. I'll copy test 04 and I'll copy it to test 05. And I'm going to make this row a little bit taller. Now let's compare it using the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. The first thing we'll notice is that here, the extent of the graphic frame that holds that table got larger. The whole table takes more space than it used to. As it turns out, when you want to change the height of a row, you do not need to update this value. PowerPoint will update it for you. You just need to update the height of the row. The OpenXML SDK productivity tool got a little confused here, but the key thing that we want to see here is over here is the TR element and it has an H attribute of 594360. And if I look at the previous version of that TR element, the height was 370840. These values are in emus. Let me show you what those are. I'll open up part one of the OpenXML specification. And I'm looking for the A colon TR element. And here we are at the A colon TR element in the OpenXML specification. It's in section 21.1.3.18. And we can See, here's that H attribute, which defines the height of the row in the table. And here we can see in section 20.1.10.16 that this is an emu. In section 20.1.2.1, we see this unit of measurement. It's equal to 1 914,400th of an inch, and it's equal to 1 360,000th of a centimeter. Emus enable us to transform numbers between English and metric units without any rounding errors during the calculation. This is the whole reason for those emus. Now let's go into the productivity tool and let's take a look at this TR element. One easy way to do this is that we can click on this OpenXML SDK documentation button down here, and that brings up this search window, and I can type in A colon TR, and there we can see the table row element. Here's the documentation for it. We can see the height property for that height on that element. And further, when I searched for A colon TR, it told me that the class in the strongly typed object model in the OpenXML SDK is the class table row. So let's say I want to go look at that A colon TR element and see what the code looks like to use that element. I'll open a file, I'll open test 05 in the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. And I'll start dropping down. There's the presentation. Go to slide one. Keep digging down here. And here's our A colon table, and below that is the table row element. Let's say I want to see the code that is generated for this. That will give me a good idea of how to use that class. So I'll click on A colon TBL, and I'm going to click on Reflect Code. And I can see the code over here. And what I'm interested, let's say I want to know how to set that height property, that height attribute. It's going to be table row 3 that we want to see created. Here's the creation of table row 3. And we can see that, in fact, that attribute on the TR element that H attribute is set via the height property here on the table row class. This is C Sharp 3.0 property initialization syntax. So this is standard C Sharp 
these days. And it's setting that height property to the value that we saw in the markup. So there we saw how I could compare various copies of the presentation and understand the markup that PowerPoint was generating. I could also go into the OpenXML standard and find that TR element and read about it. And also I can use the Document Explorer and use the OpenXML SDK documentation in the OpenXML SDK productivity tool to find out more about that particular table row element. That's all I'm going to cover in this video. See you next time.